Welcome to another episode of the Cisco U. My name is Rafael Lebo Ochoa. Gone are the days of you plugging in a hard connection to your Cisco switch and getting unfettered access. Gone are those days. And you know what? It's a good thing. And the reason being is because it used to be that we can trust anybody to just walk up to a switch, connect a hard uh, RJ45 connection over to that particular switch and provide unlimited connectivity. That is no longer the case today because we have to be more assured that the person that's connecting is actually an authorized user and that that user is also getting the correct access that he needs in order for him not to take advantage of all the services that he should not be able to have access to. So what I want to talk about today is 802.1x. 802.1x provides us a way not only to authenticate anyone who connects to a switch, but also provide authorization through the use of an icebox. This will give us a way to make sure that not only do we treat that person with the same type of verification capabilities as if he were logging into a Windows box or even a Macintosh device that requires authentication for him to log into the desktop, but also when he gains access to network resources, are those network resources network resources that he should be able to access? So let's go ahead and take a look at how to configure 802.1x using the icebox as our authentication and authorization device. In order to configure 802.1x with the icebox, we will need to follow three steps. On the first step, we will be configuring 802.1x on the switch using the IBNS 1.0 configuration. On step number two, we will set up the icebox in order to authenticate 802.1x connections and apply the access restrictions needed. On step number three, we will then verify the results using the logging. In order to configure the 802.1x IBNS 1.0 configuration, you will need to use the following commands. The first command is the .1x system auth control command. This enables 802.1x on the switch. The next two commands after that are the radius server command. This configures the PSNs that you want to send authentications to and receive authorization requests from. Now, if you want to bundle these up together, you can use the AAA group server command, which is recommended. In this particular case, we call the group ICE-RADIUS. As you can see, we have both of those servers now within that particular group. The next two commands after that are the AAA authentication.1x command. This will allow you to go ahead and process all the authentication requests that are coming from any interface that has .1x enabled and send it over to the ice-radius group that you just configured. The next command that we will need to configure after that is the AAA authorization network command. This command is necessary in order to receive authorization requests from the ice boxes. If not, we will not accept them on the switch, which means that if you have a VLAN configuration or an accessless configuration, that you wish to receive from the icebox dynamically, it will not accept it if you do not have this command. Once you're done with that, then you will need to go into the interfaces that you intend to configure 802.1x on and configure the following commands. The first one is the switch mode access command. This is necessary in order to enable the authentication command to become active. Without setting the switch port mode to access, the authentication command will not be present on the interface. The next command that you will need to configure in order to enable 802.1x is the host mode configuration. This controls how many MAC addresses we will allow to authenticate on a single interface. By default, it's set to single mode. However, if we want more than one MAC address to be able to authenticate on a singular interface, especially if you have a hub connected to that interface, and you'll have dozens of different uh, users that you want to authenticate from that hub that's connected to this interface, then multi-auth is required. The next two commands after that are the order and priority. With the order command, we can control at what order we're going to authenticate this particular user, whether it's using MAB or .1x. If we want to set the priority, we can say, look, we want to use .1x as the priority because we want to make sure that if this person is using a supplicant that's using 802.1x configurations, then we want to prefer to use that as a priority then map. To activate this interface to start utilizing 802.1x, 
the authentication port control needs to be set to auto. Once you're done with that particular part of the configuration, then you will need to set this interface to the authenticator option using the .1x PAE command. This will make sure that we're acting as the authenticator when we're receiving messaging and translating that messaging over to Radius when we send it over to the ICE box. To enable MAB, you will use the MAB command. And lastly, in order to speed up the 802.1x authentication process, it's recommended to set this interface to port fast. If you do not set it to port fast, it will take a little bit longer for the spanning feed process to go through in order to activate the port, so that way we can start the process of authenticating using 802.1x. In order to configure the icebox in order to receive 802.1x requests, we will need to go into the dashboard, select the sandwich icon, select policy, and then select policy sets. As you can see, I already have two custom policy sets called wired access policy and wireless access policy. Since we're setting up 802.1x on a wired device, we're gonna configure the wired access policy by selecting the greater than symbol on the right. If we go into authentication policy, we can see that we already have two authentication custom policies. One for MAB called wired MAB and one for wired.1x. Now notice that the one for wired MAB is pointing to the internal endpoint store, which is the MAB internal database within ICE. For the wired.1x, we are sending all of these requests over to Active Directory for verification. Anybody else who cannot be determined to be MAB or .1x, we will go ahead and use the default at the bottom. If we go into authorization policy, you will see that I already have some authorization policies already configured, but none of them for users. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna configure a new one by selecting insert row above by clicking on the sprocket symbol. We're gonna call this uh, domain users and under the condition studio, I'm gonna select click to add attribute. I'm gonna select the attribute for identity group and then I'm gonna select my Active Directory store, which is the abc.public. On the pull-down menu, I'm gonna select all of the different groups that are available to me for authentication. In this case, I'm gonna select domain users because those are the users that I want to successfully authenticate using this particular rule if they match. So I'm gonna click on use, and from there I'm gonna select the pull-down and I'm gonna go ahead and select what type of authorization I want to send them. Now, in this particular case, I'm gonna send them a generic permit access, but later on, if I want to, I can create a different authorization profile in order for me to send a more restrictive policy that includes a downloadable ACL. Once I'm done, I can go ahead and save. Once this is saved, I can go ahead and test this by going into my client computer activating the network interface. So I'm gonna go into the networking settings, select the network adapter and turn on the adapter that's connected to that interface that supports 802.1x. Once I do that, it will prompt me for authentication. So in this case, since I'm using Active Directory, I'm gonna be using an Active Directory user. And I'm gonna be typing in the password for that user. Once I authenticate and it identifies me and I gain network access, I can go back to the ice box, select the menu, operations, live logs, and I can see that that person has successfully authenticated. As you can see, I see a green check mark by that log by the employee, abc.public. If I click on the details, I should be able to see that he matched the wired access policy here at the top and then he matched wired.1x authentication. On the authorization, I see that he matched the wired access policy for the domain user rule and it's set to permit access. So now the user has access to the network based upon whatever the permit access gives them. Remember, later on you can go ahead and change this and send a downloadable ACL in order to restrict access even further. To restrict access even further, 
you can go into the sandwich menu, select policy, and then select result under policy elements. From there, we're gonna go into authorization and we're gonna configure a downloadable ACL. We're gonna create a new downloadable ACL and we're gonna call this my underscore access. And here we're gonna go ahead and enter some ACL statements. And I'm gonna enter a couple more at the bottom. so I can add more access to the user. So as you can see here, I have my access list that I wanna go ahead and use. If I wanna check the syntax to make sure that they're correct, I can click on the syntax checker to verify they're correct. As you can see, there's no errors. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this by submitting. And now I have my new downloadable ACL. To utilize that, I will need to create a new authorization profile. I'm gonna create one and I'm gonna call this permit uh, gen access or generic access. I'm gonna encase that in an access accept as you can see here on the access type. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and select downloadable ACL name and select the downloadable ACL that I just created called my access. I can go further and I can assign this person to a VLAN that exists on the switch. In this case, VLAN 20. And on the bottom, it's gonna give me an example of all the attributes that are gonna be sent over to the switch in order to change the access. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit. And I'm gonna go ahead and see that I've created the new authorization rule that will go ahead and control this access. You can see it's called permit underscore gen access. So if I go back to the rule under policy set and under wired policies and under the authorization policy, I can remove this generic permit access and now I can put in the other rule that I just created, which is the gen access and save that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna authenticate again by bouncing the interface. Once it authenticates me, it looks like it used the previous credentials that I entered before. I can go back into my ICE interface, go into operations, live logs. And as you can see, I have the new authentication that's been processed. If I click on the details of the log, as you can see, it now gave me the permit gen access on the authorization result, thus restricting my access on the network. So as you can see, using Internet One x is very vital in order not only to verify who is logging into the network, especially when you're using a Cisco switch, but also to verify that they're getting the right authorization to restrict their access. Hopefully this video was informative and I will see you in the next video.